Magnesium is one of my daily non-negotiable supplements and it has been for nearly a decade now. I used to use about seven or eight different forms from magnesium glycinate to magnesium chloride to magnesium malate to magnesium citrate and several others. But recently I stopped and I mainly use one other form that not many people talk about for a reason that I'll explain in this video. But first, why is magnesium so important? Well, to quote one study, magnesium is involved in practically every major metabolic and biochemical process within the cell and is responsible for numerous functions in the body, including bone development, neuromuscular function, signaling pathways, energy storage and transfer, glucose, lipid, and protein metabolism, DNA and RNA stability, and cell proliferation. Plus, over 600 enzymes require magnesium as a cofactor that are currently listed in enzymatic databases with an additional 200 where magnesium acts as an activator. It's involved in everything from cellular energy or ATP production, as I just described, enzyme production, immune system function, blood pressure regulation, muscle contraction and function, relaxation and nervous system health, just to name a few. It's also one of the most common nutrient deficiencies in the modern diet. And you won't necessarily notice a magnesium deficiency on your blood panels because less than 1% is actually found within the blood serum. The way the body works is first, if you have insufficient magnesium intake in your body, your body will pull magnesium out of your bones and out of your muscle and other soft tissues to make sure that the blood levels stay balanced which is disastrous for your long-term overall health. If you're very involved in the health and wellness world, you'll probably hear different companies talking about their blends that have five forms of magnesium, seven forms of magnesium, nine forms, 13 forms, all in one product. And as the marketing claims go, that's because different parts of your body require different forms of magnesium to function. But is that true? In my opinion, most forms of magnesium are a waste of money. That's because every mineral you consume in order to actually be used by the body has to go through a multi-step process. You must digest it and then absorb it and then actually assimilate it for it to be usable. Each form has a different ability to do each of those. But when it comes to your actual magnesium intake, what matters most is the amount of what's called elemental magnesium that you're getting. This is magnesium in its purest form, and it really should be the target of any magnesium supplementation. One of the most popular forms you'll hear podcasters and scientists and influencers promoting is a form of magnesium called magnesium threonate. Magnesium L threonate. Magnesium L threonate. Magnesium threonate. Magnesium threonate. Magnesium L threonate. All the forms of magnesium you hear about are what are called chelated forms, meaning you have some kind of molecule, usually an amino acid, bound to elemental magnesium so that your body can use it. While each of the ingredients bound to elemental magnesium have their own benefits, it's not a very efficient way to get them. You're better off getting a pure form of elemental magnesium and then supplementing with the malic acid in magnesium malate or the glycine in magnesium glycinate. If you look at the back of the bottle, check out the serving size, how many capsules it is, then the dose you're getting, and then specifically the amount of elemental magnesium you're getting from one serving. You'll probably notice that you need six horse size capsules just to get a small dose of elemental magnesium. And when you do the math, it gets quite expensive to be getting enough elemental magnesium from magnesium L3 on it. Plus, a lot of the forms of magnesium have issues with producing a laxative effect at higher doses. So even if you scale up the dosage appropriately, say two times, three times, four times, the serving size, just so you can get enough elemental magnesium, then you might not necessarily retain and absorb and assimilate that magnesium. To go back to magnesium l 3 8 when I looked into the research, I was shocked at how low quality it is for the amount of publicity this form of magnesium has gotten. The big claim to fame of it is that magnesium l 3 8 crosses the blood-brain barrier and can exert benefits in the cerebrospinal fluid and in the brain specifically. It's the brain's form of magnesium, as they say. This theory originated from a research study of aged rats. In particularly, it compared several different forms of magnesium, magnesium citrate, magnesium chloride, and other non-magnesium ingredients that are related to magnesium L3O8. And they noticed a 7% 
increase in magnesium concentration in the cerebral spinal fluid, 7%. That's not even compared to the better forms of magnesium. In another study of magnesium L3 and 8 that I looked into, the researchers hypothesized that the reason it was able to increase magnesium in the cerebral spinal fluid by 7% was simply because, and I quote, the increased brain levels are most likely due to the increased absorption and the related higher circulating levels of magnesium, meaning simply they just consumed more magnesium and that's what caused the effect. Then the other studies that came out later showed similar benefits, but when you look into what they compared it to, they used junk forms of magnesium also, mostly a pharmaceutical form of magnesium that's not at all like the ones most people use. So while I have no problem with magnesium glycinate and taurate and citrate and chloride and all the other forms, and in fact, I still use them sometimes. My preferred is ionic magnesium. Unlike those other forms, with ionic magnesium, you're getting about 98% absorption and assimilation into tissues within minutes. In order to be effective, ionic magnesium and all ionic minerals, because you can get your other minerals in ionic form also, they need to be processed and put into a stabilized form called picometer sized liquid minerals. Most products that do that are pure and free of fillers, additives, binders, artificial colors, preservatives, GMOs, sugars, flow agents, etc. If you're finding this interesting so far, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Or if you think I'm missing something and there is a lot of extra reason to choose the other forms of chelated magnesium instead of ionic magnesium, drop a comment below and let me know why. The other thing you wanna look for when choosing an ionic magnesium or ionic mineral product in general is that they're using a stabilized ion of the mineral. This is key to making sure it's effective and is essential to allowing each drop to pass into the mineral channels of each cell. Unfortunately, that technology is quite pricey and it's difficult to do, so few companies make these products. And sadly, there isn't as much research on them, but I did come across one study that was quite interesting showing just how powerful ionic minerals can be. Now, I still use other forms like magnesium chloride topically to relieve muscle tension and muscle pain or soreness after an intense workout, or I'll bathe in magnesium to relax and unwind, and sometimes I'll still use magnesium malate for a little boost of energy in the mornings. Mainly for convenience sake and because it's cheaper, but overall the best bang for your buck when it comes to magnesium and other minerals, from my own experience, is going to be the ionic picometer stabilized liquid minerals. If you're curious what product I'm using, I will put a link in the description below. And although I am an affiliate of theirs, I get a small commission if you purchase through that link. I actually purchased this with my own cash. Many companies ship me products and this is not one of them. I still buy their products and use them every day. If nothing else, I hope you look into the supplements you're taking and the forms of magnesium and really follow the information back to its source because as you may discover, like I did, there's a lot more fiction than there is fact in this. And if you use one of the other products and enjoy it, great, keep doing it. But if you're not, you might want to follow the research. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and send it to a friend that's currently taking a magnesium product and hit that like button. And until next time, be an outlier.